After 24 years, Konami's legendary Castlevania franchise had become one of the oldest gaming series still around, and it was starting to show its age. The series had not had a successful release on a console since 1997. It would be easy for the studio to say that it had run its course and the time had come for a graceful retirement. But though their attempts to make 3D games for modern consoles had met with failure, on 2D handhelds, the series was as vibrant and popular as it had ever been. Konami could see that the franchise still had fight left in it, but they couldn't figure out how to tap into that energy. Other studios had successful 3D actioners, 2D actioners still had a market, there had to be a way to capitalize on those genres that they just weren't trying. And so, Konami decided to make a gamble. Actually, two gambles. They were going to burst back onto the console space with titles they'd kept secret for years. The first 2D Castlevania to hit consoles since the 90s, and a 3D game from a foreign studio that nearly never got made. It was the riskiest move Castlevania had ever taken. And while the road was pretty rocky at times, in the end, the Castlevanias of 2010 brought the franchise back from the brink of obscurity and into the mainstream once again. Konami had always developed Castlevania games in-house, but lately that just hadn't been working the way they wanted. On top of that, by the end of the 2000s, it was apparent that Western and Eastern audiences were drifting apart. To address all of that, Konami decided to see if an independent Western studio could manage to do what they could not, bring Castlevania into the 3D realm in a way that the Western market would respond to. So they came to Spanish developer Mercury Steam and asked them to pitch a brand new Castlevania game, one that would start fresh and not connect to earlier games in the series. The thinking was that the mythology had gotten so bloated and complex that it turned away newer gamers. By giving it a clean slate, it could attract the uninitiated. Mercury Steam jumped at the chance to develop a flagship title for a major publisher. It didn't take them long to work up a tech demo of their vision. But after reading some progress reports on how things were going, Konami's executives were not impressed. The direction sounded too dark and different, and they didn't want to pursue it any longer. Normally, that's the end of a project, but one of the game's producers, David Cox, knew that his team was onto something, and he wasn't going to let it go that easily. He told Konami's US headquarters that he was going to fly over to them and show them the tech demo they'd made. If they still didn't like it, then fine. But against all odds, the US management changed their minds. They thought the tech demo looked promising. So Cox returned to Spain with happy news. Mercury Steam would be allowed to build out a prototype, which would then be reviewed by Konami's bigwigs back in Japan. However, Cox was told that they still didn't want it to be branded as Castlevania, so the game would now be an original IP. Konami was starting to feel good about this new game, so at Gamescom 2008, they showed off a trailer for their brand new, all-original action game, Lords of Shadow. It was well received and, tellingly, the trailer was compared more than once to Castlevania. For all that, Mercury Steam still didn't have the go-ahead to make a full game. In October of that year, they came to Japan to show off their prototype to Konami's senior managers. And to their surprise, there was one other guy in the room, Hideo Kojima the mastermind behind the Metal Gear Solid franchise. Would they like it? No. They loved it. All of the sudden, Konami didn't want Lords of Shadow to be its own IP anymore. They wanted it to carry the Castlevania banner into the seventh generation of consoles. And if that news wasn't good enough for the team, Hideo Kojima himself was so impressed that he asked if they wanted his help. Naturally, they did. With Kojima on board, Mercury Steam found that their game was now a top priority, and they had the resources and creative freedom to do whatever they wanted. While Kojima didn't work on the title full-time, his input was vital in pushing the game into its finished form. He gave them advice on everything from the tiniest details to a complete overhaul of the title's protagonist. Originally a one-note action dude, he evolved into a much more nuanced hero. And at E3 2009, it was Kojima himself who revealed that Lords of Shadow had become the new Castlevania. It would be coming Fall 2010. And yet, to everyone's surprise, it would not be the next Castlevania on a console. At E3 2010, the mastermind behind the franchise's handheld titles, Koji Igarashi, 
announced that he was making an old-school 2D game for the Xbox Live Arcade. And as an Xbox Live title, it would be designed from the ground up for multiplayer. This would be a wild co-op experience, in which up to six players could choose from famous Castlevania characters and duke it out in one huge castle. Konami realized that 2D games had snuck back onto consoles through downloadable services. This was their chance to take their successful handheld team and deliver their products to a new audience. Castlevania Harmony of Despair was released in August 2010, the first time a 2D Castlevania had been on consoles since 1997's Symphony of the Night. Sadly, it was not met with great reviews. While the action was great, some of the features felt rushed out the door, and the emphasis on co-op meant that the game was far too difficult in single player. This was not a good sign. Igarashi had been the only guy making respected Castlevania games for years. Now it was all on an unproven team to show their worth. In October 2010, Castlevania Lords of Shadow finally released. And to Konami's relief, it received solid reviews. The finished product featured lush visuals, varied levels, inventive art design, and an astounding 20 plus hour experience at a time when most campaigns could be timed in single digits. It also pulled in top caliber talent for its cast, including Robert Carlyle, Patrick Stewart, and Jason Isaacs. And while it was faulted for being derivative of other games, most notably God of War and Shadow of the Colossus, it nevertheless managed to deliver a fantastic playthrough. The little developer from Spain had managed the impossible. After nearly getting cancelled, Lords of Shadow at last gave Konami a 3D Castlevania they could be proud of. And so proud are they that rumors have already surfaced that Mercury Steam is hard at work on the sequel. Video game franchises come and go, but very few have had something so compelling at their core that they survive changing trends over decades of time. The original Castlevania delivered an experience unlike anything gamers had played before, and over the years, the series has continued to polish and perfect 2D action into an art form all its own. And though in the past its 3D titles have fallen flat, with Lords of Shadow now finding mainstream acceptance, Konami looks set to bring the series back to its console home for good. However, the original mythology will only exist in the 2D space, with the 3D titles taking their own course. The question remains how faithful to its name these new Castlevanias will be, and whether or not console gamers will accept them in the long term. But at the end of 2010, Castlevania is in a stronger position than it's been for a decade. It isn't for certain yet, but the time may have come at last when the morning sun will vanquish Konami's terrible night.